today we are going to look uh, in uh, our late night presentation the book of uh, proverbs chapter 7 the book of proverbs chapter 7 and see the prophetic insights that uh, we can have from uh, the pages of this wonderful uh, chapter and uh, i believe that um, we are all well and the Lord will bless us as we share in his word. So i like uh, to invite us to pray as we share in the word of God. Heavenly Father, once again, we bow before you, the King of Kings. You are the only one who can, Father, give us the strength even to live in such a time as this. And uh, may the perfect will be done in our lives, Lord. Forgive us our trespasses and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And uh, bestow us your gift, Lord, the gift of thy Holy Spirit, that it may guide us in all truth. This is my request in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, I'm glad that uh, I can be able to share once again. Uh, when we get such opportunities, we... Praise the Lord for everything. And so I'd like us to look at uh, the prophetic insights of the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 7. It's a wonderful chapter that uh, a loving parent gives uh, instruction to a son. And so uh, let us see what we can glean from uh, this chapter. In Proverbs chapter 7 verse 1, um and uh, let me allow me to share my screen so that uh, we may be able to be blessed together um in uh chapter 7 verse 1 we are told my son keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee keep my commandments and live in my law as uh, the apple of thine eye keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee keep my commandments and live and my law as the apple of thine eye and so we know that it's only by heeding to the word of god that men can have life and uh, um, moses tells to the israelites or the the children of israel that um, uh, i said before you life and death this day to see what you will wish for and so we know that it's only by heeding to the word of god that men can have life not only temporary but uh, eternal life for we are told that man shall not live by bread alone but um, by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the lord according to deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 3 and um, when you look at uh, the book of uh, John chapter 6, 63, we are told that uh, the words of God are life indeed. But also you should remember in Psalms 119, page 100, Psalms 119, um, verses 172, we are told that uh, I'll speak of thy commandments for all thy commandments are um, righteousness in psalms 119 172 my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness and uh, what we need in our life is the righteousness of jesus christ to be able to have eternal life and um, in psalms 119 verses 9 to 11 wherewith shall a young man keep his ways pure it is by taking heed um, according to thy word and uh, the psalmist say that with all my heart have I sought thee, all oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. It is only in the heart where there is no sin that uh, the Holy Spirit can find a dwelling place and uh, be able to regenerate a man. And so, uh, as this parent, as um, this um, proverb is being written, that my son keep the, my words and lay up my commandments with thee. 
keep my commandments and uh, live. That is what exactly God wants us, that uh, we may be able to have fellowship and communion with him, that we may be able to hear that still voice, that we may be able to live. Uh, if you look at uh, Job chapter 1, verses 14 to 22, you will find that we are not going to read, but disobedience has always been uh, or uh, has always brought destruction. And uh, obedience, Job says, leads to hardness that cannot be taken away, even in the time of affliction. He says that um, even though he slay me, uh, I shall still praise his name. Even though he slay me, I'll still uh, praise his name. And he says that. Uh, when I came to the world, I came with nothing. So when I live, I live with nothing. So that doesn't matter so much to me. If uh, the word of God is dwelling, abiding in our heart, then John chapter 14, verse 27 says that we have that peace that transcends all the uh, situation that we may be going through and uh, it will not be able to over, uh, um, overcome us. No temptation has come unto us that is beyond that which has been uh, procured for us even the eternal salvation and uh, in, in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8 we are told that uh, will it be affliction whichever calamity can it prevent us from the love of God it cannot and so what we only have to do is surrender as uh, the son is being admonished in Proverbs 7 1 to we are looking at Proverbs chapter 7 the prophetic insight. In Proverbs chapter 7, verses um, uh, 3, we read that uh, bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thine heart. That is, write my, write my commandments uh, upon thy fingers and write them, uh, bind them upon my fingers, thy fingers, and write them upon the table of thine heart. And so, if the words of God shall be in on our fingers, then it means that whatever thing we shall do, we shall do for the end to the glory of God. That is, uh, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 31, whatever thing we do, uh, even if we eat or if we drink, let us do it in the for the glory, for the glory of God. And you understand that um, the, the first angel's message calls us to give glory to God. And the best way to give glory to God is uh, as we have fellowship with him, that uh, we shall bind his word upon our fingers and we shall keep it in our heart that uh, we may not sin um, uh, against him. And, um, and uh, when you read Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8, and Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18, uh, we are told that you shall keep uh, the word of God in the frontlets, in between the frontlets, that is between the eyes. It shall be a guide. You, you shall not veer away from it, but uh, it shall be a guide unto you uh, when you are walking. Uh, it, it should be in your frontal lobe, you know. Uh, Satan wants to mess with our frontal lobe so that we may not hear the voice of the Lord, but he's saying that that is where I want my word to dwell so that uh, when Satan comes, he finds that uh, you are fortified and that uh, Christ is having his place uh, through his word by faith. In uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16, bind the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And so uh, that is binding the word of God upon our fingers and upon the table of our heart really seals us uh, to be the disciples of God, according to Isaiah 8, 16. And also, um, in uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, we are looking at these prophetic insights in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 7. In, uh, in the book of Revelation 7, 3, looking at this issue of binding the word of God upon our fingers and writing it upon our hearts, we are told, saying, Hath not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And so the uh, the right of the Proverbs is looking into the future where actually those who bind the word of God and seal it upon their hearts will receive the seal of the living God and uh, be able to shine his glory. The saints will be sealed in their forehead and what they do with their fingers, their hands shall reflect the works of Christ, not their own righteousness. 
they are sealed in their forehead to show that it is the righteousness begotten by faith, saved by grace, uh, not by their own works, but Christ working in them, the hope of glory. And um, uh, we know that uh, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, uh, we are told that um, he who has started a good work in you shall be able to accomplish it uh, uh, until the day of the Lord. Uh, Christ himself will be able to accomplish it. And in Philippians chapter 2 also, from verse 12, we are told that work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to do and to will and to do of his own um, good pleasure. Paul in uh, Philippians 3, 9, he says that he may not be found by the righteousness which is of the law, but the righteousness of God which is by faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, we are admonished in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 3, to bind uh, the word of God upon our fingers and write it upon the table of our heart. And this will result into our names appearing in the books of heaven. And so um, if only we take heed to what the Lord tells us in this uh, chapter of Proverbs chapter 7, we shall find ourselves on the Lord's side. Uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verses 4 and 5, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that uh, they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which fluttereth with her words. And you, you, you can gaze where I'm headed with this about um, uh, 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 keeping yourself from the strange woman and uh, keeping away from this woman that flattered. Uh, in, in, in the book of Proverbs chapter 7, verses 4 and 5, we find that uh, a woman is introduced. A woman in Bible prophecy symbolizes a church according to Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 32. So a pure woman will then represent the true church of God according to Revelation 12 and uh, Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 2. And the impure woman will represent an apostate woman in Revelation chapter 17. Now, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 4 says that, um, um, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may, be, uh, they may keep thee from a strange woman. Look at Revelation chapter 14 verses 5. These are they which followeth the lamb whatsoever he goes, they were not defiled by women. They did not participate in this strange uh, 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 women or they did not affiliate themselves with the impure church, but uh, they walked in the straightness of the path. And so Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4 and 5 can apply to us if only... The only way we can keep ourselves from the woman that flattereth, the stranger that flattereth, and the woman, this strange woman, we are told is to have the wisdom. And uh, in James 1 5, we are told that whoever doesn't have wisdom may ask the Lord, and he will give you, he gives without uh, upbraiding, he doesn't withhold anything from his children. And uh, Daniel chapter 12, verses uh, 10, the wise shall be able to understand, but the wicked shall not understand a thing. And uh, we know in uh, Job 28, 28, that um, uh, uh, to depart from the evil, uh, that is, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to depart from evil, this is understanding. And so you are finding this uh, pure church really not mingling itself with this strange woman. Uh, in Proverbs 7, 6, for at the window of my house, I looked through my, 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 my casement or um, what um, yeah, we may call the throughway. When a house is built, it has two most important openings, the door and the window. The door gives full light, but the window sheds in a dim light but from the same source as the door. In a greater context, the Bible takes the president as the door, while the book of the law beside the acts as the wind, which in our day will be uh, the writings of uh, the prophets, um, which are not canonical, um, canonical. So 
we find that uh, the Lord admonishes us through his word and uh, there's a window of light really emanating from his servants as uh, they take the messages to the world. You, you know that the Lord will do nothing until uh, uh, he reveals his uh, secrets to his servants, the prophets. And so as we read this Bible, we come to an understanding and uh, you know more light is added. And when we talk about more light, it is just uh, the word of God shining in a new way unto us as we read it and meditate upon it daily. In uh, Proverbs 7, 7, and beheld, and be, beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. What a calamity. Here is a young man without an understanding. And you may ask yourself, why is this young man without an understanding? The, the word simple as it's used in Proverbs 7, 7 has been used variously in the Bible, but from the context of Proverbs 7, the most probable meaning is uh, the foolish person. You can send a foolish virgin in this case, a man void of understanding, understanding uh, uh, what is on the way. Why, why is this young man not understanding what is on the way? Because in the previous uh, like um, five verses, we have been told in Proverbs 7 that uh, keep the word of God in your heart and uh, you will not be ensnared. And so, for this young man to be ensnared, it means that um, the first five verses of Proverbs chapter seven were not taken into heart. For we are told that keep my words, bind it upon thy fingers and keep it upon thy heart. But he didn't do this. So he, he became foolish. He became a, 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 a Laodicea or a foolish virgin. And then he, he, he was without understanding. Looking at the same um book in Proverbs 9 13, we are told a foolish woman is clamorous, she is symbol and knoweth nothing. She is foolish. And in Proverbs 14, 18, the symbol inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. And Proverbs 22, verse 3, a prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the symbol person and are punished. So looking at Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7, you see that uh, the word simple in this context means means uh a person, a foolish person, a person who has no understanding. By not taking heed, the next verse tells us that the young man was ensnared with the wives of a strange woman as the fools who despise instruction and their end is folly. So it's the young man who despises the instruction, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 7 to 19. And so in uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verses 5, we are told that they may keep thee from the strange woman. But Proverbs chapter 7, verse 7 sees this man who is this young man who is simple, that is foolish and doesn't have discernment and is void of understanding. And then when you go to Proverbs chapter 7, verses 8 and 9, you find what happens to this young man. Remember, this is uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 7. We are looking at the prophetic insights in this book. So in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, as this young man could not keep the word of God in his heart, he became simple, he became foolish, he became a Laodicea, he became a foolish virgin, and then he was ensnared. And so in Proverbs 7, 8, 9, passing through the street near her corner, this young man, and he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. You see the hours that he's walking. The young man, void of understanding, thought that he could just go anywhere and be safe at any time. He ventured to pass near the street corner of this diverse woman, this strange woman that he was warned against. Remember, this woman ascertained, is ascertained as the impure woman of Revelation chapter 17. And we are told that uh, it is only the wise who will be able to uh, not be caught up in her snare. And so this impure woman, as it's likened to Revelation chapter 17, ensnared this young man. And uh, this young man, he, when you look at the hours, he went to visit this woman. Uh, nothing else you could expect but uh, calamity. And uh, in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 3, uh, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, sorry, we are told that uh, be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? But uh, you see that uh, this young man enters into the darkness 
in the house of this strange woman. And so uh, what does inspiration tell us about uh, uh, the young men who are waiting for Jesus Christ, those who are pure and are waiting for Jesus Christ? Uh, do they have to mingle with these strange women? Do they have to go uh, like in such hours to see people whom they are not uh, related to? In uh, early writing 124, we are told, I was shown the necessity of those who believe that we are having the last message of mercy being separate from those who are daily imbibing new errors. I saw that neither young nor old should attend their meetings for it is wrong to thus encourage them while they teach error that is deadly poison to the soul and teach for doctrines the commandments of man, of men. The influence of such a gathering is not good. And you, you see this young man, what he's doing, we are told passing through the street near her corner, the corner of this strange woman, the corner of this fallen woman, he went the way to her house in twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And so the angel ceases to take charge and care over this young man, according to early writing 124.3, early writing 124.3. And so when we do this, we are told the angel sees their watchful care over us and we are left to the buffetings of the enemy to be darkened and weakened by him and the power of his evil angels. And the light around us becomes contaminated with the darkness. He is moving from the light to darkness. And where is he headed? He is headed to a house of a strange uh, woman. What is he going to do there? Probably he's going to listen to fables. And Timothy, as a young man, was warned to avoid foolish uh, uh, fables and uh, old wife tales. He, he was admonished by Paul to keep himself pure and not be contaminated with the stories of uh, the women. And so there is no safety, much less benefit for our people in attending these popular uh, uh, joints and places where only uh, what is passed to them and what is breathed in that atmosphere is darkness. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of, of, of the devils. Uh, as a young man, as a people who are called from darkness into marvelous light, we have no business uh, actually condemnating with the people who only are surrounded with darkness. You see this young man in verse 7, uh, that uh, in verse 8, that uh, is going to visit this woman in the dark place. In uh, proceeding verses, uh, Proverbs chapter 10, chapter 7, verses 10 to 17, we are told, and behold, there met him a woman with the utter of an harlot and or an uh, subtle heart, subtle of heart. She is loud and stubborn, her feet abide not in her house. Now is she without, now in the streets and light in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently to seek thy face and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. And so the word Egypt there caught my attention. When we talk about Egypt, we are talking about people going back into the world, people going back to the old habits, the carnal self, and um, uh, living spiritual things. And so this, you can be sure that uh, this man is not going to escape uh, the, 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 the hands of this uh, woman, strange woman. Notice the woman is dressed in an attire of a halo. That sounds like Revelation chapter 17, uh, Babylon the Great. Uh, that is the halot, the, the mother of uh, all this uh, halo tree. And so what does this woman do, this strange woman? She lieth in wait. Now, you, 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 can, uh, you can hear the story of the leopard, how it lieth in wait for its victims. This is the leopard-like beast lying in the 
in the thicket waiting to pounce on someone who is uh, moving unaware. And so this young man, uh, by not heeding to the word of God, he has just placed himself in the way of this uh, harlot woman. And so she lieth in wait. This woman lieth in wait. She sets up her trap and waits, and she won't necessarily come to you. Her characteristics are that of a leopard which lieth in a thicket ready to pound on her prey, Revelation 13.2. We read with astonishment the boast of Rome. And let it be remembered, it is the boast of Rome that she never changes. And uh, 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 she plans in time. She plans in time. And uh, while um, uh, many are unaware of what is laid on the way for them, they are caught up in her snare because she sees what shall be, we are told. It, it, it's only the wise who shall understand, remember, according to Daniel chapter 12, verse uh, 10. The wicked shall not understand. And so my admonition that um, if the elect could be deceived, how much more we should be watchful because the devil is uh, going around like a roaring lion ready to devour his prayer, his prayer, I mean, um, and so this woman had a strange attire, meaning that she was not clothed as Christ would want her church to be clothed. In verse 1, the man was told to keep the commandments and he will live. The main objective of this woman was to make the man forget the commandments, compare and contrast the garment of Christ and this woman. And uh, so Christ's garment in, in Exodus chapter 28, verse 5 and 6, we read, and they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue and of purple, of scarlet and fine twine linen with cunning work. The strange woman in Revelation chapter 17 verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and in scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Conspicuously, she's meeting, she's missing uh, what uh, will be what the blue color and the uh, she's uh, is she missing also fine linen, which is the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ, and blue color, which represents the word of God. Proverbs chapter 7, when it starts, it says that keep the commandments that you may live. This woman is decked in an attire of a hallowed, and the attire of the hallowed in Revelation chapter 17 doesn't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ and also doesn't have the law of God. And so uh, uh, those who don't take heed of the word of God, they will be ensnared with this woman who actually uh, uh, walked, walks in her own devising. She has her own attire. She has her own righteousness. The woman in Revelation 17 is missing blue color, which represents the commandments of God according, according to Numbers chapter 15, verse 38 and 39. Garments also in the Bible represent the righteousness of Christ according to Revelation 19, 8 and Isaiah 61, verse 10 and Revelation 3, 18. This is an apostate woman espousing a foolish man who has abandoned his true religion because uh, the true religion consists of... Uh, we are told in uh, Isaiah 8.20 that uh, to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, there is no light in them. And this young man, this foolish man, didn't have the word of God, so there was light, no light in him. She has her own righteousness, according to Isaiah 4.4, which God says is filthy rags in Isaiah 64, verses 6. Egypt, being a house of bondage, the woman enslaved the young man in bondage of sin where the word of the Lord is not taken heed to, then only sin follows after. Her false doctrine can be found in every institution in the world, schools, churches, and government. She is not confined to herself. Look at uh, what the word of God says, that uh, her feet abide not in her house. She can't be confined. She is a carefree. The feet that should be carrying the glad tidings of the Gospels in Ephesians 6.15 is carrying the wine of Babylon to every corner of the world, according to Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 5 to 7. This is the state of this woman. And those who have been joined to her have become one body, as we are told in 1 Corinthians 6, 16, that uh, whoever is joined to a harlot, so they were a one, so they are all in harlotry. 
Proverbs 7, 18, continuing with the uh, Proverbs 7, the prophetic insights. Proverbs 7, 18, come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. This is the wine of Babylon. It is interesting to see how this word morning has been used in the scripture. Prophetically and spiritually, it conveys the resurrection morning. That is the second coming of Jesus Christ. This woman ensnaring this foolish man tells him that let us go and enjoy ourselves till morning. And prophetically, you find that uh, that morning will be too late for this young man. In 2 Peter 1.14, we have also a more sure word of prophecy where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. There is no rising of the day star in the heart of this young foolish man, for he has been ensnared and the word of God doesn't dwell in his heart or he has not bind it in, in, in his fingers. And so the woman will want to ensnare this man until the morning, until the, the door of mass is closed, until probation is no more. In Proverbs chapter 7, verse 19 to 22, for the good man is not at home, he's gone a long journey. Remember, he that he hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. He goeth after her straight away as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction uh, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. And you remember that uh, the Bible called this young man a simple one. And now here we are told that he is led away as a fool. So our interpretation of uh, him being a foolish uh, virgin or a Laodicean is not bad. Notice in uh, Matthew 20, 11, the good man, and when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house. So this woman is telling the young man that uh, the good man of, is not at home. He's gone a long journey. And we know that the good man is the owner of the house, is the, 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 that righteous man, the right man. And so he tells this, she tells this uh, young man, let us do um, uh, our biddings because this man is not here. When he cometh, uh, we will be, will be done. And uh, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 15, and unto one he gave uh, five talents to another two and to another one to every man according to his several ability and straight away took his journey. So the, the good man is not at home. He's gone a long journey. And um, um, he will come, the woman says, at the day appointed. Who has appointed that day? Only the good man knows. But um, this uh, woman wants to ensnare this man. The young man had been entrusted with the commandments as his head by the good man. Because uh, when Proverbs chapter 7 starts in verse 1, we are told, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. He has been given the word. But now he is being ensnared like a fool because he has left the word of God. We are told that uh, who he keeps the word of God shall not be ensnared with this strange woman. He follows the lamb whatsoever he goeth, but this man is not following the lamb whatsoever he goeth. And so um, while uh, the young man had been entrusted with the commandments as his head by the good man, while the woman knows the good man is not in her house because she is an apostate. There's no presence of God in Laodicea. The good man took a long journey to prepare a place for the young man, according to John chapter 14, verse 1 to 3. The young man was to wait for the good man till the appointed time there. But being ensnared, he could not tarry in patience till the good man uh, returned. In Luke chapter 12, verse 46, we read that the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Again, by fair speech and indulgence of lasciviousness, the young man was blinded by the temporal delicacies of this woman. He was enticed with the mouth of Egypt. So Romans 16, 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ by their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You know, this, this young man is a simple one, a foolish one. And um, the, the, this uh, uh, woman 
uh, blinds this young man who is uh, serving for his own belly because he has seen the things of Egypt. She, she told the young man that uh, I have prepared all these uh, precious things of Egypt. Come, let us marry until morning. And so we are told that such a young man who is ensnared like that, ensnared is like, like that, doesn't serve Jesus Christ, but serve it his own belly and by good words and fair speeches um, deceive the hearts of the simple. In Proverbs 7, 23, as uh, we come to almost a close of this, till a dart struck, strike through his liver as a bird hasted through the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. And so while they were still in marrying in Egypt and doing uh, all the enjoyments of life, what happened? A dart struck his liver. Now, I don't think there is life left anymore. The consequences and end of this young man was fatal. The dart through his liver was life ending. Probation was closed for him forever, Revelation 15, 8. And only what awaited him was execution of judgment. And so we are told in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26, that uh, if uh, we continue in sin willingly or knowingly after we have received the truth, there is no more offering, but we, what waits us is uh, the fearful judgment that is set before us. Uh, and, and remember Moses said that today uh, uh, I set before you life and death, choose ye one. And he says that choose life and death. And so for man, all, uh, man also knoweth not his time. You see, while uh, this young man is uh, in the in the house of this supposed uh, woman, marrying uh, himself with the things of Egypt, Ecclesiastes nine twelve tells us, "For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in, in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it falleth suddenly upon them." There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Proverbs 16, 25. If only this young man could have taken in the word of God. If only we who are living in this time can take heed of the word of God. Only a certain fearful uh, punishment awaits those who doesn't take the heed of the word of God. A certain and look for calamity will get those who are not prepared when uh, the uh, voice go on, behold the bridegroom coming, then we shall know who has prepared and those who shall suffer fatal death. And uh, this young man, what is he doing? We are told that he is drinking, he's enjoying the things of Egypt. The book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 and 38, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So he is enjoying the things of Egypt, drinking and eating. And be known to him, probation is about to close. And so uh, we are told in uh, a testimonies to the church, volume two, page 337, paragraph two, men and women are in the last hours of probation and yet are careless and stupid, and ministers have no power to arouse them. They are asleep themselves, sleeping preachers preaching to a sleeping people. Uh, and that is what happens every now and then when uh, we think that uh, it was the time to sin a little bit, to enjoy a little season of sin. That is when Christ is saying, you know what? Thy soul is needed uh, in heaven right now. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. Hearken unto me now, therefore, all ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. As it started, so it is going to end. Hearken to my word. Again, he repeats the same thing. After looking at the fate of this young man, we are reminded again, hearken to my, the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. Don't take heed to the words of this apostate woman, to this uh, alert woman. No, don't go her way. Don't, do not go astray in her path. Here is the reminder to everyone who will not be ensnared with this strange woman. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That is 
uh, Proverbs chapter 7, verses 1. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work in the judgment, which with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it will, it will be evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. If um, we can only hear the conclusion of the matter as it is laid in Ecclesiastes 12 and uh, Proverbs chapter 7, then uh, we who are living in the end time, we shall not be deceived when uh, the devil even makes an attempt to deceive the elect of God. If only the young symbol young man, if only the symbol young man could be could have listened to the uh, advice in Proverbs chapter seven verse two, his life could have not ended in misery. Uh, and uh, uh, we are glad that uh, we are told that uh, we have been given a second probation, even though that we have wandered away in the ways of the harlot woman and strange woman. Uh, God says that. Uh, uh, if we come back to him right now, we can be forgiven. If we, we have wandered away from him, we can return and he will heal us according to Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 14, 12, here is the patient of the saints here, they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Re-echoing what uh, 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 Proverbs chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Only by being patient and keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ that uh, we can have a better accomplishment. And so uh, looking at the last verses, 26 and 27, um, for she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Verse 27, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. This woman has ensnared many. And in Proverbs 14, 8, we are told, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And so uh, only the wise will understand. And uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And to depart from evil, that is understanding. And that is what we are being called for if we will not drink of the wine of Babylon. And so not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our character have one spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the defects in our characters, to clean the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 5, page 214, paragraph 2. And uh, my prayer this uh, evening as um, uh, I just thought to look at the prophetic insights of uh, the book of Proverbs chapter seven, my prayer is that uh, no matter how deceptive the power of the devil has been through uh, the church, the apostate church, we shall stand firm till the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ at his appointed time. Only if uh, we keep our eyes on him, only if we take heed to his word. The word have I kept in my heart that I may not sin against thee. And so be blessed with the prophetic insights of uh, the book of Proverbs chapter seven. And uh, may the Lord continue communing with us and may we continue having the fellowship with the father and his son through the spirit in Jesus name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly father, we pray that uh, you may give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that uh, we may not be like the simple, the foolish virgin, or uh, the young man who drifted into Laodicea and mingled with the influence that corrupts. We do not want to wait until it is too late to be saved, Lord. Save us now. We can't give our hearts, but Lord, you can take it and seal it for thy courts above in heaven and give us a new life. And so bless us more in this hour that uh, we are entering in, even the hour of temptation. May we look up un unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. This is my prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. And uh, until next, be watchful that uh, you are not ensnared with this strange woman.